Welcome to Level Up Your Games on Net with me, Disrepute, joined by Voice, the G Sports TDM Draft Championship Tournament Cup event. Looking forward to it, Eivor. Yeah, I actually can't wait. I know, I can hear it in your voice. It's nights like this, you know, you know you're playing the right game and can't wait this. <laughs> Eager. That anticipation. It's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. it's been just too long. We've waited for this semi-final. For saw the other semi-final a couple of nights ago. That was actually a really good three mapper. Ridiculously really? close. Double overtimes even. Really? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear about this. Why yeah, well, you, you asked me to commentate with you. Um, you were busy. Was I? You didn't ask. I know that's. You didn't. You I, didn't ask. I spoke in IRC and you didn't answer me. So anyway, if you, don't, if you don't type my name, <laughs> then I'm not going to read it. Okay. Well, I did tonight, so nothing to worry about, eh? I suppose. Anyway, so it looks like going to be EXO versus AIM. I guess we'll call the two teams, eh? Um. Okay. Fair enough. So these were the draft teams. They were formed a couple of weeks ago. Um, supposed to be mixed range of skills, skill levels of the players. Mixed race as well. What would you say about the two teams looking at them? So, Exu, we got Nicer Dicer, Nightops Dash, and Ujio. I can't remember how I said how we said his name before. I don't what about know. that team then, star player. Well, Dash. Really? If he's uh, he's in good form, yeah. About Nightops. Well, he's good as well, but... Recently won a uh, Nations Championship, didn't they? Sure did, but... You just asked me who I thought the star man was, right. I said Dash. <laughs> so... Shouldn't my opinion matter more, though? You should just predict what I'm going to say. Don't ask me for my opinion if you want your own <laughs> to matter more. Okay, what do you think of the AIM team, then? We've got Gizmo, Tekka, Serbed, Serbs, sorry. And 4-2-1. Well, yeah, Gizmo and 421 are obviously the standout players, but, you know, the teams do seem pretty even, regardless, so that is always the you know, desired outcome of a draft pick tournament, isn't it? You want even teams, so I think we've got that tonight. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that as well. It's going to be um, Dreadful Place and Purgatory, the two maps. Yeah, Purgatory. I wonder who picked that. I mean, no, it's hard. It's hard sometimes to have a, a favourite map with a mixed team. So starting off nice and dice, they're getting that red armor spawn. He's actually managed to get the lightning gun ahead of Gizmo I didn't as well. I to get that. I'm sure Gizmo was stood on it. That doesn't make any sense. He just sort of circled it. Wow, that's a nice rocket right into the chest of Nice and Dice. He does come out on top with the frag though, lightning gun. This is a good start for Nice and Dice here, in fact. Yeah. Brilliant that play. Weapon. Although Dash has just run straight past it because he already had a rocket launcher, so no point taking two. He actually did go down and lost that weapon, which yeah, manages to take out Dash. Was... Did he not get the red armor? That's weird. I'm sure he was stood on it. Anyway, Tekka's only got 20 health. I'm going to cycle around and have a look on the rest of the map. Serbs. Serbs. Why can't I say that? I don't know. Maybe you're dyslexic? Yeah, well, I am. Looking on that quad side of the map, Gizmo grabs that. Nicer dice is stacked 100 100 with a rocket launcher now with this battle suit. It is a couple of seconds behind quad, so it will run out after quad into the red room already. Although red has already been taken. Oh, bad rockets, but makes up for it. There's the quad. If he drops down, he could be in trouble here. Some good rockets. Stuff with, and he gets pinned against the corner. But his rockets looked decent to start with, but Gizmo. Really good LG, wasn't it? 42% because... LG, bro. Yeah, and he had him pinned against that wall as well, so you know, after he's hit the initial LG, it's so easy to then follow up with uh, the bouncer pinned against that wall. Maybe. But I think Gizmo must have had some armor then. Yeah. Because, no, those rockets were decent. They weren't perfect, but I would have expected him to be slightly lower than he was. Maybe he could have gone a bit more aggressive, pushed into the face of Gizmo, but the LG just pushed him back so quickly once he got a grip on it. Gizmo uh, gathering in that red armor, looking at 100 armor again stack. He has got a rocket launcher, he ignores the ammo, which he does need for it. He has shotgun, lightning gun, 
Even a few grenades to chuck about the spot. One frag game ball. Yeah, close as you'd expect, and Gizmo probably going to get this next red of that under pressure from the ray light. Well, great that attack there. It's like aim you know, you're never going to know what to expect in terms of team play when you know you've got teams that aren't proper teams. But you know, so far, it's looking pretty decent by both teams. That attack we just saw in red, especially. Yeah, very well timed and coordinated. I don't think they actually got the red out of it in the end, but they did kill the key man. So we've only got 10 seconds to go before the quad, which is just before the battle suit. Now that might be a bit of a dilemma between the two teams. Obviously, most teams would normally try and control the battle suit because it's the easier location to hold. And while those two items are of uh, the same time that they spawn, then that's fight. fine. But spawning Three, after, I mean, two, this scap's not going to make too much difference at all. Yeah, I don't really think battle suit being after quad is too much of a problem on this map. Now, if it was quad after battle suit by you know, five or six seconds, then that can be a problem. Look at Gizmo's stack here. It's going to boost up that armor to 170 as well. Pick up the shotgun en route. Kind of needed that, only four rockets. He might even get an LG out of this. Um, okay. Well, we a good time, time of red, red. yeah. Because he did sacrifice the kill to go and get that red. So now he needs to he really do something. Quad quad yeah, but he seems room. very passive considering he has 190 armor almost. Strange one that he didn't move into a more aggressive position, but I guess he knows yeah, the time of red, just, so. He's just taking two rails without dealing out any damage. I mean, a bit of a waste, you'd have to say. Well, there you go, he loses out on the red, he actually mistimes it and gets fragged for basically no real damage in the end, so kind of a bizarre end. Yeah, it's a strange run that was. I mean, I can't imagine that the quad would have had any chance against him with 200 armour. Now following Dash, Hungarian national team player. And he'll be one of the higher seeds in that team. Picks up the red, does have a rail in hand, gets the frag on 421. And picks up one of those dropped LGs. They are 10 frags behind now. Don't want it to uh, build up too much further. 10 seconds to all the red again, stuck inside this room. Dash is a little bit laggy, I think. Yeah, he is warping, it was mentioned just before the game started. They got three, have them cycle away from him, have a look around the map. UGO. Serbs. Very low as well. Yeah, here's Serbs getting the frag. Yeah, and he's working around that railgun slash upper corridor area, which is such an important part of this map. Well, they're taken from behind by Night Ops, impressive LG. And that is obviously a key battlefield on this map. Play. Is that rail area. So important to control it. Good plasma spam as well. Dash picks up this quad. Two quick frags. Serbs yeah, with the double power up. As well. Oh, it's not double power up. There you go. Nice rail onto the quad. Might hit another here. A little bit too eager. That's kind of got the quad pinned though. Oh, somehow that one didn't hit. Goes aggressive and actually gets the frag on the quad. Now the battle suit's got five seconds to just move out. Try and take advantage of a free run map. He's not really going to be able to do much. Red is up. And they secured that at least. 10 frag margin is maintained. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's not immediately obvious where that frag difference has come from. I mean, item pickups are fairly even. I mean, there's not a huge gap in those items yet. Let's have a look at the scoreboard quickly. It's like all of the uh, XO team negative frag nets and nearly all of the aim team positive nets. So it's across the board pretty equal. It's not like there's one star man holding either team either back or propping them up. Nice, the dice are just dropping down here, looking for that red. 10 seconds away, just gonna have to back off as he saw his opponent. Yeah, he probably in. doesn't have any idea on the time, he was just hanging around that stairway just to try and get a time on the red. Gonna go down here, yeah. Ah, uh, he's probably not gonna get a time off of that death either. Uh, it looks like they might have a time of that. His dash dropped down just as it was picked up. 
Yeah, and that red does seem to be the difference. Of wow, that's nice real. There's not much difference in the red pickups, but it does seem like AIM are far more organised uh, in trying to keep that red under control. They seem to be picking up the frags around the red as well. Very nice railing from Serbs here. Quad goes down instantly. Bausu is picked up by Nicer Dice. He has a bit of armour. So there's a, a chance to bring the score back a little bit. This is their opportunity. The red was just taken. We heard it on stream. I doubt he would have got that sound. Oh, I can't find oh, that. Oh, no. Okay. Does get the frag. Sees the yellow through the telly and dies straight through. <laughs> God. Don't why do they jump on that? <laughs> don't know why they jump onto that teleport exit. We've seen it before. Telly fragged. Just going to wait on this red instead of hunting down those players. I'm not sure that was the best choice, but kind of doesn't matter in the end. Does get a couple of frags. Whoa, 4 2 1. Heavy shotgun he took there. He misses the next three, though. Eventually gets the frag. Yeah, eventually. But uh, interestingly, if anything, the score difference has increased for. Uh, I don't know about increased. I think it stayed the same. 25. Excellent. Again, we see A moving in on this red room. Seems like that's their focus. Yeah, as it should be. I mean, just basic red and then go to rail if you've got armor and weapons, I think, would Sub be enough. I mean, these aren't. As we've mentioned, these aren't proper teams, so they've only had limited time to get to know each other and maybe get some practices, or maybe not even practice at all. Well, what's the benefit of doing tournaments like this for? Um, I think it, it can give the opportunity for you know players who aren't in the better teams to play with some of the better players, because obviously we have you know, a seeding system that spreads out the talent into... You know, across all the teams. So you've got a wide range of skills and everyone gets to play with good players and against good players. You know, maybe they will improve. So Quad is up. Is, it's our pre. Gizmo grabs it. He's pretty stacked. Nice to dice to get in the battle suit though. He hasn't got too much to work with here. It has only a shaft as well with hardly any ammo. This could be a, a big gain for the quad, especially if he goes aggressive, what? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't really weigh that up, did he? Yeah, that's good thinking by Gizmo. Give his teammates a bit. Doesn't need it. Wow. Battle suit run we saw earlier that had 200 armor and wasn't willing to attack. Time we see someone with no armor and 40 health. He was <laughs> 30 <straight> ammo. <laughs> uh, I don't think he really thought about that situation before he moved in. When you do have a power up, sometimes you just think, "Gotta attack. Gotta do something." And uh, your rational thought process can elude you. Of course, that's why we see some of the absolute best players are so good at power runs, because they they don't necessarily throw it away. They manage to... Yeah, I mean, if you think about what he could have done in that situation, I mean, the quad was on his own, so that means that, you know, there's three teammates of that quad who might be running around with almost nothing, so go and look for them if you, you know, don't have the health and armour and weapons to challenge the quad. You know, go and find some weaker opponents. You don't have to necessarily take on the quad if you're not equipped to do so. So past the halfway mark of this first map, it is a best of three. This is a semi-final, remember? So it has to be decided tonight. Has to be, yeah. Has, has to be. be. There's no other way. No, they'll flip a coin if needs be, although they won't need to, so... That's good. <laughs> yeah, great. Quad's still up first. Yeah. Three seconds said, before. Makes, makes no real difference. Now, it's only when the quad is a few seconds after the battle suit that you start worrying on this map because battle suit will suddenly become way more important if that's the case. Or well, is there a possibility that maybe at the quad end of the map you could delay the quad? Well... Why would you want to? Simplify the tactics. Like, you, you, you could, and then you'd have to get battle suit. But then if you did delay quad and didn't get battle suit, you'd be so screwed, it's not even funny. And that's why nobody on this, mass, on this map ever takes that risk then. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Because it, it takes five seconds on a clean run to get on top of a quad from suit. And it's not I mean, really like Grim Dungeons where you could be blocked off. It's. But you can be blocked off, but... Uh, 
it's not as easy because but even if you try and hit the battle suit in the back, he can just, assuming he's got a decent amount of health, he can just ignore you and go straight to the quad still. Fallen you Knight know. Ops here. Five seconds to go before the red is up. Looks like he's going to be up to 150 armor by the time he picks that up. And move out with the shaft, rockets, plasma, shotgun even. Danish international champion. Yeah, I mean, he's going to exactly the right areas, it's just there's nobody in them. Wow, it looks like they moved the completely opposite direction to get in in the red and actually took so much damage from that yeah, shaft there. his lightning gun was pretty off then. Only 25% for him, he would probably He's doing the right thing higher. though, he's back to his next red and then he can move out either towards rail or back out the way he did previously, but rail is definitely the right choice. That, three Already picked up right. two kills. Yeah, I mean... It, it, oh, and there he kills a teammate. I mean, we've said dunk stand on that teleport <laughs> exit, and there we go. That's why you don't do it. Night up's just showing exactly what you can do, even if you get damaged. If you just think about what you're doing, wait for the armor, you'd be all right, won't you? There oh, you go. That was so it. lucky. I don't know why a teammate skill, wasn't mate. willing to take it. I mean, luckily that 50 health is up for him, but taking it with six health, it's very risky because the armor's useless. Well, that's you a know, really just... nice passage of play, though. Gizmo. This is a great way to survive, just hide yeah. under here. <laughs> survive out the whole run. Have some nice stats at the end of the well, match. That rail would have killed one. him, so luckily he didn't make contact. He wants that 50 health desperately. There's the quad! Worst time possible to go up those stairs. Oh, Obviously no way for him to know, but... You wouldn't expect the, the quad to be coming through the telly at that sort of time. If anything, you'd expect the quad to have already been through the teleporter. Yeah, because obviously that's one of the standard routes. Often we see the quad taken and then they go straight for that lower telly, but that was the tail end of the quad, so not expected at all. Again, still Night Ops managing to just survive each time on the lowest of health, but then build himself back up. He's had a good couple of minutes here. Yeah, he has. Six twenty frag margin. I mean, they, they need Night Ops to pull out this kind of performance, in fact, to start bringing it back. Still possible. Three p rounds of power ups to spawn. Am I lagging or are you lagging? It might be me. I don't know. Okay, so you cut out then for me. Night Ops was still defending that red. He does get taken down. Didn't need any teammate support up until that point, but now they've lost the red. This could be the bit where AIM established their control of the map again. Yeah, and they, they kind of need to because the momentum that Night Ops has given his team from that, you know, last two minutes of play we've seen from him well, you know, gives them the chance to come back in this game. There he is, going to get this red. And it I think he's be taking the ones these reds power -ups. And using them like we've seen him use them in the last few minutes. You know, this game can be turned around. Look at this 140 army, he's going to get shotgun as well. He's going to be the battle suit. Guy, Nisa's teammates has now start pushing out and start aggressing on that, well there you go, on that rail position, the easy rail shot frag though, nice movement, almost catches up with the quad there and hits a rocket. This rail could be quite oh, useful. Oh, this could be very useful, yeah, nice rail shot, does take one himself though. Uh, I don't know why Tech has come looking for the battle suit. Oh, great frag on the quad, shotgun rail combo. I don't know how he's caught against the so long. <laughs> it did he dodged so many plasma bullets. How about that though? That's a little bit weird. I mean, where was his teammates there? He was in that position a good 20 seconds or something, fighting multiple players. Yeah, you have to wonder because obviously, you know, he was trying to get into red, and that's what his teammates should have been doing as well. He's trying to support him in getting into that red. I mean, he'd already done the hard work. He killed the quad. He got other kills as well. It should have been his teammates backing him up then and secure red. Perhaps that's what we see. Wow, nice rocket from Night Ops. That's probably what we see in the fact that it is a draft tournament. Yeah, but still, that's, that's kind of basics of the map. Look to get into red. Oh, they do save the mega health. 41 is frag. Let's have a look at some of his stats for the minute. 66% rail, 43% LG, 40% MG. This is what we expect from uh, the current crop of Russian top quality players, isn't it? Excellent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Red Armour's going to be grabbed by UGO. And uh, that will be pretty much the last one before at least the battle suit. 
you can maybe get to quad with the last red, could you? It's a bit close. Mm, no, not really, unless someone saves it for you, of course. UGO deciding to stay around this sort of quads area. He needs to really get there now. Three seconds. It looks like he's spawn. the yeah. only one here from his team, so he's going to try and steal this quad, and hopefully they'll get battle soon. Oh well. no! Gets shafted going up the bounce pad. He kind of gave them that, really. Well, it would have been a double power up for them. Nice to dice there now. Wants to pull out this rocket, probably. No, he's going to do some arrogant rails instead. Oh god. <laughs> Eventually gets the frag on 4 2 1. Now got to move out and take advantage of this battle suit. Red is Get just about red. to spawn. Mega is up. Teammate steals red. it right on top of him. There we go. Doesn't want to get caught underground here. Probably wants to rocket jump up and move around them or just let his teammate deal with it. If he can. Oh, his battle suit's one out because if he'd have cleared that area out down towards rail, that would have been a perfect suit run. Well, I wouldn't say perfect, but it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think the start bit could ever be um, redeemed to make it a perfect run. No, unfortunately not, but... It wasn't too bad anyway. It's oh, well, still it wasn't great. Difference has reduced a little bit. Maybe. Well, it's actually got wider. It was down to 15 at one point. Yeah. I think, unfortunately... We saw that that quad died when it maybe shouldn't have. That would have been a double power up. That might have brought them back to you know, 10 frags or so. And then going into the final power up, they could have certainly had a chance. But it takes too much to ask now for this first map. Which will undoubtedly go to aim at this point. Moving in as a team here into the red position again, and that's the thing I've been most impressed by them. Every time we've seen them attack, say the red area, it is as a unit. Yeah, and it makes all the difference. It doesn't matter how good you are. I mean, you have to pull out unbelievable play all the time to take out multiple opponents attacking you. Quad is picked by Tekka. First time I think we've actually followed him. Stay with his point of view. As he moves into this red room, clears it completely out. Who's got the battle suit for? Burbs. So, nothing to worry about for Tekka. He's got five frags on this run already. Could be six coming up. It is. Maybe seven even. Misses both rails though. Six frag quad run. Very impressive though. Consolidating this uh, victory and making it look like it was a much easier one than perhaps it really was. Yeah, it's comfortable in the end. There was a you know, period of play around the 16th, 17th minute that looked like uh, Exo might be able to bring it back, but was uh, eventually dealt with by AIM and they have sealed the map. And we'll be going into the second map, which is what exactly? I think Dreadful it's Dreadful Place, place as I recall. Yellow's pretty similar. There's a little bit of an advantage on the reds for the blue team there. Yeah, and that's where the game was won. I think we identified that AIM just were much more organised in attacking that red when they didn't have it and then also looking after it when they did. Dash not having a very good round at all there and considering he would be one of the higher seeded players. And that is what's throwing off the perhaps balance and why it wasn't so close. Dash obviously as you say a high seeded player, but if he's having connection problems and can't perform as well as he normally does, then you know, that results in a game that isn't as close as it should be. So going into map two is best of three, so this could be decided if AIM take this map victory. 
Looks like there's going to be some player changes. Hippie joining the team. Yeah, he's in instead of Dash. Obviously, well, might be in instead of Dash. Could also be in for Nicer Dicer, as he's also joined Spec. Nicer Dicer is the administrator of G Sports oh, wow. as well, so I guess he would just stay on the server. Yeah, and well, if his team loses, he can just save everyone. <laughs> I guess he could, yeah. <laughs> well, if you're the admin, yeah. why not? Why not? Why not indeed? Who needs to be fair, eh? Hippie, yeah. And uh, Desma. How do you think you say that? Desma? Desma? Desma. Desma? Well, I'd say it like that. Okay, we'll go but for Desma then. Listen, listen, right? You can just say things however you want. <laughs> Doesn't matter. They don't tell you anyway, do they? And, you know, if there's someone you don't like, you can purposely get their name wrong. Like novice. Yeah, oh, exactly. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Is that the game we're covering? Yes, the next game. By the way, yeah, everybody stay tuned because... Um, stay tuned because what? Because... Ooh, you haven't got a reason. Build up the tension. Now, there's another game after this. It's going to be Action versus Proct in the ESL Autumn Cup. Another two maps. That's, yeah, two maps fixed. But because this game um, is yeah. running late already, really going to have to see AIM win this map. To make sure that game actually happens on time. So you're cheering for AIM, are you, Dis? Well, I don't really mind, so... I'm cheering for the other team. Where are they again? Oh, XO. Dicema with that shaft spawn early on. Nice bit of shaft, they did take a rocket and... Frag by yu gi We've got a quad time up, in fact. 30 seconds to go until that. And that's the key on this map, boy, isn't it? Quad setups. Yeah. Quad setups are the key to this map. Not necessarily the quad run itself, because I don't know how many times I've said this in past casts, but it is incredibly difficult to get a lot of frags with quad on this map. Is it so easy to avoid quad? It might be a little bit easier to get frags than opposed to a normal clan team who's a lot more. Yeah, possibly. But there might not be the level of communication that there normally is. There we go, quad is picked up. Taking a lot of damage, machine gun in the back. Rocket launcher, not the ideal weapon. Although it is in this situation. Nice frag, he's got three already. 4 2 1. Yeah, but you have to say that it's fairly arrogant for the players to stay there and try and think they can kill the quad rather than just leave. Yeah, it was. Um, Obviously, in a position like this, Dash has got no choice, but he does manage to get away, and that's perhaps the difference. Well, there's the still score. players running at him. What? <laughs> yeah, bizarre, but. Not like. too many in the end, but you know, Dash did Oh my thing. god, what an air rocket. Now he avoided the quad around those pillars, and then when he had this opportunity to escape, he did so, but unbeknownst to him, the rest of his team thought they'd just run at the quad <laughs> as he was making his escape. With machine gun. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just <laughs> One not, at a time. Not a great idea, is it? And that's the whole reason that we've got such a frag lead at the start here, which we normally wouldn't see. I'm gonna cycle away from 41, not really doing too much. Hippie, haven't seen anything of him so far, as he's just joined for this map. Working around this yellow armour area. And if you don't hold the red for, the key's gotta be to make sure you get those yellows and the mega health, hasn't it? Yeah, otherwise you're gonna find yourself massively underpowered compared to your opponent. You know, red armor is so important in this map, I think, because there is only two armors, so you know, there is no, there's no chance to back off from red and take two yellows. You know, you're either getting red or you're getting yellow or you're getting nothing, so red more important on this map than perhaps certain others. 20 seconds. 20 seconds before the quad. 41 is there already, and you really want to be there 
this early at least, you know, maybe a bit yeah, earlier. I mean, often in clan games, you'll see people get there as early as 35, 40 seconds early, which sounds like a hell of a lot, but you can pick up so many frags from those early setups that it's worth it. Excellent. 421 did go down but managed to get all the way back in with a little bit of armor. Shotgun in hand, rocket launcher to work with as well. Now a few shards in that middle corridor bit. Hunt the frags. Yeah, and he's taken them by surprise here. They weren't really aware of where he was. They're quite a clever route he's taken. He knows the time of Mega as well. Yeah, and he'll know that there should be some spawners back over there because his teammates have been picking up kills. Oh, he's going back to red. Maybe he's been called. Wow, the quad had run down, and it looks like, yeah, they were aggressed on there already. Actually, he does get fragged from that aggressive rocket jump. I think he had mistimed maybe the red a little bit, or was well, just trying he, to get lucky. I think he did it for positioning, but unfortunately for him, someone was in his back as well. He only thought that there was the guy sat on the red to worry about. Other elements of this map as well, though. I mean, there is a green armor. That's 25 Oh, yeah, that's armor well points. useful, that is. There are some shards through that yeah, middle corridor, that. 20 points of armor that adds up to. But again, both of those really probably the advantage goes to the red position. Yeah. So either way, if you're on the red side of the map, you're going to get a lot more armor, aren't you? Yeah, the key, of course, is that the red on its own, you know, without weapons is not worth that much. You have to use that red and then push out to the weapons because there are no strong, or at least not the typically weapons that are considered strong, they're not positioned near the armour. Well, at least not near the red armour. So you have to move out if you want that lightning gun or that rocket launcher or that rail gun. You, know, you can't just sit in the red room and expect to get a lot of kills. But the red is a big advantage. You take it to the weapons, you win the weapons, and then you've got red armour plus weapons. Quad and ten. Dice, Dice were just taking that red. Nice plasma! Bloody hell, on Dash. Picks up a shaft as well. Takes a lot of damage though from Hippie's rockets. Those could be important. And Serbs gets the quad instead. And he's not particularly stacked. He does have a lightning gun with a lot of ammo though. Gotta be careful going through this doorway. He's gonna health up to 100. Mega's There's up in a couple gun. of seconds. Gets the call from 421. So that's worked out well. Although look at those rockets from Dash. Down to 50 health again. He has to build up all over again. 100 health though and three of the four shards. Just look yeah, at the doing, ranks. They seem to be doing quite well here, Aim. They seem to have a time on Mega, Railgun, Red Armor. Those are some real key items on this. <laughs> Yujo just fragged. Falling Serb still you going know, back to this next Mega. I was wondering what that name reminded me of, and I remembered. It's Yu Gi Oh! That cartoon series. I don't know what Yu-Gi-Oh is. I, I haven't seen much of it, but that's what it reminds me of now. So his name is now Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh, okay. <laughs> so there's a nice couple of rails hits. The impressive. Turns around, shotgun, two players against him. Was briefly saved by his teammate, 4-2-1. Who, uh... Seems to be working as Mega for most of the map so far. Oh, nice bit of plasma killing Dash. Look at that couple of kills in a row. Third, excellent. And it looks all a bit too easy for AIM at the moment. 9 to 2 on Megas, by the way, there. 11 to 3 on Reds. Equal on Yellows, I mean. Uh, yeah, and that's, that is something you wouldn't normally see uh, in a really organised game. You wouldn't see, unless there's a huge difference between the teams and skill level. No, dominating red and mega pickups. And being equal. And yellows, I mean. It's basically like EXO are getting nothing at the moment. They're so heavily out of source, it's unbelievable, really. Look at this, 41 down for that mega again, then. This, this quad one, I mean, he shouldn't have too much trouble. Obviously, the distance at which he has to cover there to get across to those two players, he would have taken a lot of machine gun damage there, so he just decided to sit back use the plasma at distance and try and grab himself a kill down in the rail position. Dash heard him coming, but couldn't really do anything about it. And the quad runs down. 4-2-1, again, a great quad run. 80% rail, by the way. Yeah, it's pretty good. 38 LG. Yeah, that's decent as well. Not bad. 
he has missed out on the Mega this time. Yeah. And he seems to have been timing that most of the game. It seems to be the role he's taken up primarily. Do you think we uh, might see a Mercy limit? Depends what the Mercy limit is. It's obviously not 60, so maybe it's 80? It is uh, a shame after the first map was pretty close, but a quite dominant display by AIM at the moment. Yeah, they are playing the map very well, but it's partly down to their, their opponents as well. They're just not able to really regroup anywhere. I'll be honest, it's one of these maps you can get rolled on really badly. If, if one team just gets control of those items, keeps them timed and just locks them down. It's very hard to organise something to bring it back because there's no real area on the map where you can just slowly build up yourself, you know, at yeah, distance. And, and there's so there are so few items as well, in terms of you know, armors especially, that it's predictable as to where people are gonna be. The people want the armor, so they're gonna be around them somewhere. There's but there's only two to go to. Oh my god, 421 managed to frag his teammate, gets another frag with the plasma there. And he's got, yet again, another quad. Oh my oh, god. really clever play by just walking into him. He knows he can't use the rocket launcher. <laughs> he has got every weapon bar. That, oh my god. Oh man, no, that's Rookie typical, error. It? But you see that even in, you know, organised games. People just land on that health when the quad needs it. <laughs> Nightop's just giving the quad another frag. There we go, 4 2 1. Yet again, the quad carrier. Yep. Playing this map very well. Let's have a look at some of the stats here 41 plus 25 net, 5.78k damage. Impressive. So, I mean, what can Exo do really for to kind of bring this back? Well, Is there uh, anything they can do? Unless they can, as a team, defend either the mega, mega yellow side or the red armor area, then there is no real way back in. You know, you have to be able to hold and, uh, well, comfortably hold one of those areas. But if you, if you don't have the necessary organization, then the other team, as they have been doing, they can just run around and get all the items. Halfway through then, on the time limit, 25 seconds before the next quad spawns. I want to see the teams getting there a little bit earlier. I think both teams are going relatively late compared to Clan Games, although this time it looks like AIM were there first with a couple of players hit again in frag. 4-2-1 in there, it looks like he's going to get pummeled in fact. That's surely going to get machine gun down though. Last second grab attempts. Five seconds early <laughs> from uh, Exo there. And Serbs comes out on top with this quad. Got to be cautious. Going around this corner, almost ran into a grenade. Yeah, Doing one the of right those would have killed off. him as well. Oh. All it would take. If he's going to get fragged here, good shotgun work. Night tops to follow. Two frags on this quad run. See if he can get any more. Oh. Yuga goes down the rail. So good, good thinking on the roots as well. Oh, Maybe. unlucky there. <laughs> the red is already secure, so he moved out to another important item, which was the rail. That's exactly what you want to see a quad doing. Yellow did just spawn hippie mate. He's gonna grab that. So is this one of your? Uh, favoured maps to watch for? Well, it does seem, from what we've seen in the past, to uh, have a lot of good games on it. We've seen so many overtimes, especially on this map. Oh, I don't know about it being a classic or anything, but I kind of like it. I like uh, the importance on the quad area. I mean, to yeah, set it up early. I think the quad is really interesting on this map because there's so many different things you can do. I mean, if you don't get there early and the other team does, you can decide, all right, we're not even going to bother trying to get the quad, and you can think about setting up ambushes on the like limited exits. 
But there's a lot of different things you can do. And of course, in theory, you, you should, with this kind of area that's able to be locked down, get more quads surviving. Yeah. At least pick, being picked up. Whereas, obviously, in past maps like Campgrounds, in the Pit of Death, Cord was usually eliminated instantly as it was picked up. Night Ops with this Quad, Mega Health. I kind of see Quad on this map as being similar in a way to Quake 3 DM7, in that as good as it is and as much as you can lock down the Quad pickup, the other team can, they can choose not to even bother to attack. No, rather than risk throwing away frags by suiciding into it almost. And weapons. Yeah, exactly. You can just choose to sit in an area and say, all right, we're going to sit our whole team here and when Quad comes, you know, we're going to... Quad dies. <laughs> They're actually... Uh, the difference hasn't really changed in a while. I mean, it's been 60 frags for five or so minutes. So maybe we won't hit a mercy limit after all, but X2 aren't really bringing it back either. Yeah, I mean, they just stopped the frag lead going even further away from them, really. Now, that frag lead was built up through just sheer map dominance as well. And the only reason it has stopped increasing is they just they just turned it around and uh, you know, put an end to that map domination, but they aren't bringing the score back. No, they're just they're just now playing how they should have been able to play at the start of the game, and we'd have never have had this uh, score difference. So just looking at the uh, the nets fight. minus six minus seventeen Three, minus sixteen minus two, sixteen XO everybody on the aim team with positive twenty one net. For 40, 112, Gizmo, 6, Serbs. Team performance. Yeah. I think actually the team play has uh, been a little bit more impressive between these two teams than the previous semi finalists. Yeah, who was the teams in the other semi final? Just roughly, like, it's their standout players. Um, it's worth a watch of the VOD. Definitely. Well, tell me. <laughs> just, <laughs> I can't remember. You're an idiot. I'm just wondering, you know, would the winner of this be the favourite in the final? I... From I, what you've seen. I'm not really sure. Well, obviously I'm saying... Would I would be say that... As they're going to win this, most likely. Yeah. That, well, AIM has been just really impressive on this map, and... Wow. What the hell? 41 hits another amazing rocket. rocket on the quad. I've seen that over the years from 41, just these ridiculous rockets he hits. I think the... Fa the... The final... It's going to be close. Whatever. It's going to be one that maybe we'll want to stream. Alright. Uh, Dibby. He's playing for one of the team. I can't remember Did which. Is he playing for the team that won, or...? Excellent. You yeah. don't know much, do you, Dis? Um, for someone who supposedly streamed this game. Uh, <laughs> it was two nights ago. How am I supposed to remember? I can't remember what I was doing in Skyrim two nights ago. I can't... I can't remember what happened today. I'm a bit older than you, though. Yeah, I suppose. You wait a couple of years' time, your memory will start going. Yeah, so... There was uh, M Pawned, Which uh, had ZLC, Darth Vader 9, Juarez, and So This. Oh, that's juvenile, isn't it? Is it? Sophis is, yeah. What? So this? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Didn't realise. And, um, yeah. Is that the team that won? 
could have been. <laughs> I literally can't remember. He went to three maps, he had double it's overtime. Me man. And it was close every map. He's having a bad memory and then he's being retarded. <laughs> Still fun in the squad run. <laughs> Decima. Five frags on that quad run again. Aim just extending the lead further. Yeah, but they're not going to hit the mercy limit, assuming there is one. Assuming it's eighty. So uh, that's maybe a consolation for XO that they've managed to stave off defeat by mercy limit. Yes. Something to be proud of, I guess. Okay, so it's actually Puff Puff that reached the final. It's what? This is the problem though, isn't it? <laughs> with their names. I don't have a problem with that name in any game. Puff Puff Blade. In any situation. Or Puff Puff Blade. Play it. I hope it is Puff Puff, it's not like Puff Puff is name. P-U-F-F. Okay. A few seconds to go before the final quad of this map. Didn't actually switch to it, but it gets fragged by the guy we were watching. 41 again, the key player. Listen on this to the game. way you started talking. He's been fragged by the guy that we're watching. Well, he was. What the hell? Does I'm he saying... have a name? Yeah, I said the 41. Okay. Who just said he's been fragged by 41? Well, he's fragged by the guy that we happen to be watching. What's wrong with that? It just seems like you didn't know what his name was or something. I can read his name. I... Maybe I couldn't remember it if I was asked to remember tomorrow, but uh, or even within half an hour. Impressive. But uh, we definitely saw it then. Dominant display, or by yeah, a dominant, dominant, dominators. D -d 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 dominant display. So, I think um, it should be added wins. to Quake Live. It sounds. Like that at the end of a round, depending on how much the other team is won by, you get different sounds, and one of them could be like you just said, splat, weird. Yeah. Okay. So stop the vote.